Hey there, what's up everyone? It's new here. I got a very cool video for you today on a super hot topic known as Eldritch Influence Alters. Should I choose Searing Exarch or should I choose Eater of Worlds? Which one's the best? I don't know. That's a great question. There's a lot of variables, a lot of nuance involved. Depends on what kind of mapping you're doing. Uh, and that is what I've been working on this entire past week. Been running hundreds of maps, been logging quite a bit of data, which I'm going to share with you today. And the reason I've been testing all of this is because Alters received a major overhaul this past league. Uh, one of the biggest changes this league, in my opinion, was done to Alters. Alters are my favorite mechanic in the entire game that's been introduced this past year, at least, in 3.17. I thought they were in the best state they'd ever been in, uh, for whether it was for like Quick Alk and Go or Super High Ultra Juicing uh, with Last League. And I was excited, but also quite nervous with the changes that were coming down the pipe, especially when I got to see the reveal. I knew there'd be a lot of different things I want to test. I knew the community would be, you know, kind of in a state of array uh, until, you know, people started coming forward with data. At this point, I should probably shout out Firegrass, who has come out uh, with some nice data in a recent video. Uh, he's been doing a lot of number crunching. Uh, however... Uh, I personally have taken a more uh, practical approach, actually running hundreds of maps, trying to test out things, get a real good sense on the ground what it's like uh, to farm the altars, which one's better, you know, the chaos orb to divine orb ratio fluctuations, Exarch chaos orb altars versus eater of world divine orb altars that are very elusive. And uh, whether you're, you know, you're juicing or you're not juicing, I can go whether you're trying to synergize with other different league mechanics. I've been looking at a lot of different things, but I will have you know that my primary focus has been on strategies that feature blasting through maps, trying to get in and out super fast, uh, not worrying too much about spending time on other league mechanics. And this coincides extremely well with those of you who are interested in just doing sanctums and are looking for a way to spend your time in maps where you have to spend some time in maps and to do it so highly efficiently and still make a fair bit of currency on the side. Uh, or it w is going to be useful to those of you who simply just like blasting maps like crazy and without even investing much and in essentially self-sustaining the strategies more or less. Uh, and for me personally, my ultimate goal is to do high end juicing, and I do have some insights on that as well. I think the insights uh, I'm going to provide more towards the end of the video in kind of a final thoughts fashion. Uh, definitely going to be some very important golden nuggets in there. You can skip to the end of the video if you like. Uh, I will definitely uh, call out those important pieces of information. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about alters. Here I have a an atlas tree right in front of me. When it came to testing, I wanted to get to the bottom of basically three different things uh, based on the kinds of maps I was running and the, and the agenda that I had blasting through maps basically. First of all, grand design, wandering path, or neither. Which one's the best? Which one's gonna give you more altars? Which one's gonna give you uh, more drops from those altars? Then I wanted to examine more closely the Divine Orb Altar. It's the thing that people are talking about more than anything. Uh, just how rare is it? Well, we have the numbers. They are in the POEDB. You can check that information yourself on that website. Uh, basically, it's about a 1 in 1,200 chance. A 0 0.0840% uh, weighting on there, which is roughly about 1 in 1,200, uh, which means you're going to need to see... 1,200 altars of either boss or minion uh, in order to get that altar on average. Now, of course, you could get lucky and see it twice in the same map. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who has seen that. Shout out to you, <laughs> if that's you. And there are probably some of you who have seen uh, the Veiled Chaos Orb altar multiple times, but never seen the uh, Divine Orb altar. And those of you who have experienced that are extremely unlucky because the Veiled Chaos Orb altar is twice as rare as the Divine Orb altar. So, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I tested to see how many altars I was spawning per map. That was a second really big piece of information I wanted to find because that's important to know too. If you're trying to farm altars, especially if you're trying to chase the Divine Orb altar, you need to try and get as many altars as you can per map. And then the third thing that I was testing is how many of these currencies are dropping per map on average. 
Sometimes the altar spawns the beginning of the map. Sometimes spawns the end of the map. Sometimes spawns with a uh, basic currency duplicated. Sometimes you don't get it. Well, uh, you kind of have to just average things out. And so I did a little bit of that too. So I'm going to show you all of that in this video. But first, we're going to start with the topic of Grand Design Wandering Path or neither. So I ultimately did settle on Grand Design. I'm going to explain to you guys. I'm actually, I can actually show you in real time why I chose that. So basically with Eldritch Minions, for the sake of getting Alter Rewards, quantity and rarity have absolutely no effect on this. It's all about pack size. That's all that matters really is pack size or any sort of other unique ways to spawn monsters. Now things like delirium orbs and other certain mechanics can influence the way they spawn monsters. In some ways they might spawn it more, in some ways they might spawn it less. Uh, there's a lot of conjecture on that topic too and I'm not going to get myself into that rabbit hole in this video. Uh, but first what I'm going to do right now is I am going to show you three maps check it out these three maps are all mausoleum now the reason i chose mausoleum is because i don't want to see boss altar maps but snoo can't the divine orb altar spawn on boss altar maps yes so aren't you technically losing some chance to spawn a divine orb altar if you're not taking the boss altar option yes that's right yes uh, i am technically losing uh, the opportunity to spawn divine orb to get altars that have both a boss and minion option in which case both of them could be rolling a divine orb altar in the case that I am running eater of world side but you're gonna see with some of the testing it's really not worth it because the average number of currencies you get from the minion side altars completely outstrips what you're gonna see from boss side altars and so it's worth it just closing that option out completely so I guess that's one little golden nugget ahead of time there for you. Anyway, uh, you'll notice that all three of these maps have identical pack size, 42%. So if I input these three maps in three different fashions, one with Wandering Path, one with Grand Design, one with Neither, we can actually see which one comes out the best. Now, you would technically need to test this as all different kind of pack sizes, uh, but for the sake of Grand Design, the big advantage of Grand grand design is that it's going to be highly effective even on lower pack size maps so if i can prove to you right here and right now a very high pack size eight mod corrupted map where grand design comes out on top even on this kind of map well then that just completely seals the deal and the reason it's it's like that is because grand design does not get to take a benefit of the map modifier effects here let's see what it reads it says two percent increase effective modifiers non-unique maps in the case that i take uh, wandering path it's going to say 4% increased effect modifiers non-unique map this is a direct impact on pack size and when there's eight modifiers on your map it's going to have the most impact so that is why I'm doing the high I'm demonstrating with a high pack size map so for this little show and tell I'm gonna start uh, with neither here and I will need to give myself a few points let's see here I'll just do it like this I guess something like that okay now I have to put in all of this top row because this is where you get the additional pack size normally on your maps and this does impact how many Eldritch Minion spawns you get then we also need to have these. These points are very important too. Monster packs influenced by the Eater of Worlds you map have 5% increased pack size for a total of 20% increased pack size. So this top bar here and these four nodes here are going to increase pack size. So let's see. Again, I'm just going to open the map and see. Oh, by the way, I, I keep forgetting to mention it in my 100 map test. Yes, I've had some, at least one person every time tells me in the comments. Yes, you can put the same exact scarab in th four different times in different places. Yes, you have to kind of push it out into all four different blocks. A little bit annoying, uh, but that works and it will function all the same. What am I talking about? I'm talking about growing hordes. Rusted scarabs instead grant 5% increased pack size. Without Beyond a shadow of a doubt, growing hordes is going to be the way to go. That is another new exciting addition for the sake of altar farming that we're getting we're getting more pack size on our maps with extremely low investment more than we've ever had before now i could be using gilded scarabs for this but uh, again blasting map super fast low investment uh, that is the theme of this um oh for 
Grand Design, as well as uh, for neither Grand Design nor Wandering Path, we're going to be running Shaping of the Valleys. So this is another big advantage of both Grand Design and neither, is that you get an, a bonus 10% pack size when you run Fortune Favors the Brave. So, I mean, this is an advantage so long as you're not trying to farm other things and wanting to pick other things. So we need to put Fortune Favors the Brave to see the actual proper number here we go this should show us now we need to remember what this is and i need to give myself a bonus 20 percent on top of what it says this says 84 percent increased pack size so we need to remember 84 percent increased pack size we've got to take 84 plus the 20 is 104 percent pack size given to the eldritch minions so remember that number it's 104 percent pack size that every single eldritch minion pack that spawns is receiving a multiplier of 104 percent pack size so that is what it looks like on a map with neither and again that's an eight mod corrupted map getting the most benefit that it could be getting uh, through there now next thing i need to to check is wandering path so i don't really need to change the tree much to demonstrate this once again we need to have uh these small nodes which are now getting even more hold on i think i need to we said that they haven't have been a little bit buggy i guess here that's weird it's not going up five percent hello <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that? Replay that if you didn't see it. It wasn't going up. Uh, okay, monster packs influenced by your eater of worlds in your maps have 10% increased pack size. Now it's a bonus 40% increase, plus we're going to get 2% more. So you would think, right? You would think that this is just going to be absolutely enormous pack size. But do remember, no shaping of the valleys. No shaping of the valleys. So let's see what it comes out to. I don't want to waste three chaos here <laughs> try to save what save what little currency i have because i've been doing this kind of testing and not been farming any real amount of currency okay now this is just about the same right it was 84 percent last time now it's 87 percent, just three percent more but again so so that's how much so basically essentially it's 13 percent additional pack size because i lost fortune favors of brave uh, but then I still have I still come out three percent ahead, so that is interesting, and that's with a forty-two percent pack size map. Uh, it, but do keep in mind we get to, to bonus multiply this by forty percent this time, forty. So it's eighty-seven plus forty. Now at a hundred and twenty-seven percent increased pack size, a hundred and twenty percent, hundred and twenty-seven percent. That's a big number on 8 Mod Corrupted Maps. Now, for the last trick I show you, I am going to take these out and we're going to go back to that original tree that I started the video with, with Grand Design. Okay, uh, let's see. I needed these here. These, there are a grand total of 40 notables it says here small atlas passive skills grant nothing your maps have one percent increased pack size per allocated notable atlas passive skill there was a total of 40 that were selected one point hmm. supposed to be right here I thought, ah, duh, <laughs> gotta take that out. Hey, didn't get too lost, I guess. Uh, da, 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 da. There it is, okay. By the way, taking these Alva nodes, I don't care about them. They're just being taken for the increased pack size. Uh, and then, so now I'm getting 20% from growing hordes and 40% from the notables. So we're just automatically starting off with a bonus 60%. Oh yeah, and 10% again from Shaping of the Valley. These maps all begin with 70% increased pack size. So let's see what this comes out to. Again, Fortune favors the Brave. And just for fun, I'm actually going to run this map. So you can kind of get a sense of what a map looks like on this, in case you haven't seen any of my other videos. Okay, so here it is. 112. Now, that's a little bit less than the Wandering Path one, right? Because I don't get a bonus on the minions. Yes, it's true. So Wandering Path has the potential 
to give you the highest number, but here's the catch. The downside with Wandering Path, there's two of them. One, the map's harder than any other option, first of all. Uh, and then, so also, Wandering Path lends itself to a more magic finding style of play where you're going for kind of raw drops in this case. So, Wandering Path comes with the highest innate quantity and rarity multipliers, which is nice because you're getting more quantity and rarity. But if you're just trying to blast maps real quick and you're going for alter rewards, you're not really getting a huge benefit out of that. But the biggest kicker of all, you have to run 8 mod corrupted maps to make good use of that. The second you run a Wandering Path strategy and you're not using 8 mod corrupted maps, that pack size falls short of everything else. So that's some very restrictive, shall we say, uh, investment prep setup that you have to deal with. Not true with the Grand Design set. Strat. Grand Design functions very well with 8 mod corrupted, with just 5 mods, 6 mods, with unidentified, with the uh, associated compass, which I'm not running any compass here, but there there are ways to increase pack size with compasses as well, especially unidentified maps. But at any rate, this is 112% increased pack size, it's a very nice number, and we're just going to run this map just like it's any other map. This is a Caustic Arrow self-cast Toxic Rain b Focus Ballista support build. Pretty well geared at this point. I will be coming out with a video on this right after this video. Now, you can see that Eldritch minion packs are spawning. Finally got our first altar. Uh, this is Eater of Worlds that I'm doing right here right now. It's what I've been running lately. You can see there is still some halfway decent map sustain coming out of here, uh, which is nice. Uh, I decided to take the one for Divination card rewards. I don't think Orbs of Fusing are worth picking up, so we'll just do Quant Rarity. So you can see right off the bat that Eater of Worlds is kind of nice for the Quant and Rarity side. Now, Exarch still spawns Quant and Rarity as well, but Exarch, of course, offers a lot more, shall we say, viably lucrative currency Eldritch Minion <laughs> altar choices. Uh, all right, so here we go. I think we're almost done with this map already, and I don't know. You can go back and time me, but you're going to see this is pretty much two minutes flat. It's basically two minutes. And whether I got two altars or ten altars, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this map would have been completed in about the same amount of time anyway. The only compasses I typically add here are one for plus one essence, because as you can see, with a full map clear that fast... Uh, I typically don't even do the Harbingers, actually, because I'm not spec for them. Uh, but doing Essence is terrific there. Just getting the Sanctum Floor is terrific there. Just spawn, just rolling for uh, the rewards, for all to reward. All terrific. I have made, in, in all of my testing, I have never made less than five Divines an hour. Uh, running that fast, of course. Uh, and averaging... However many altars I average, which you're going to see here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to showcase to you guys what kind of data we have. So we're getting into the second part. Where I bring you down. If I can get it to come up here. Uh, no, we're going to do there. Okay. So we've already identified or already kind of showcased to you the difference between Grand Design, Wandering Path, and none. You can make your choice uh, based on the way you want to farm. You know, again, Grand Design, the biggest advantage is the easiest maps you can get, the still highly self-sustainable, and the highest amount of pack size, especially if you're not rolling an 8-mod corrupted map. Uh, the biggest disadvantage to Grand Design design is that you're kind of pigeonholed into certain league mechanics but if that's okay if you want to go super fast i mean strong box is still good essence is still good uh and then the big advantage to neither is that you have the the full broad spectrum of league mechanics you can take advantage of the small nodes and the big notables you still got pretty decent pack size maps uh that would be better for a strategy that you're going to spend a little more time in the map with certainly uh and then the Wandering Path setup is going to be best for Magic Find style, for, you know, cranking up the heat in each map, uh, being willing to die more, more regularly. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you right here, I'm level 98, and I'm about to solo level my way to 99. I mean, that, that's because of Grand Design and how easy that is to do those maps and blast through them in solo level, uh, even at, at, at such a high level. So yeah, that is the story on Grand Design, Wandering Path, or either. Now, 
I have, <laughs> much to everybody's desire, actually came up with a spreadsheet, although it's not on my 100 maps uh, farming session. This is for some of the testing I did. So I got to give you a little bit of background on the testing. Uh... I spent a great deal of time testing whether I wanted to do Grand Design, Wandering Path, or neither. I almost settled on the Wandering Path, but then it kind of occurred to me, this is just kind of stupid how you pigeonholed into doing eight mod corrupted maps. Gotta, you, you, how are you going to get your hands on nothing but eight mod corrupted maps when you can't really self-sustain the maps? Yes, Wandering Path is good, better for self-sustaining maps, but it's not. it never dropped me more than two maps per map. So, I mean, to, to force eight mod corrupted maps in every single one, it's going to take quite a toll on the time and or the investment. Uh, whereas a grand design strategy did not came out pretty much the same anyway. So that's how I settled with grand design. I did hundreds of maps actually before I even started formally testing this stuff. Now I decided to run 200 maps in a formal test. Yeah, I know that's not a super high pack, uh, high sample size. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit tired of running these <laughs> grand design all just all in out and go uh, strategies as fun as they are. I don't like doing them all the time. Uh, but so I'm coming to you with the data today. I think it's enough data. We can kind of get some good information on it You'll see here that I have ran a whole bunch of maps. It goes all the way down to 200 200 maps are there divine orbs oh Altars how many altars I average each map you'll notice this number is actually not all that high on average I was a little bit misled. I got to thinking that my alt that I was going to be averaging five to six altars per map. It's actually a little bit lower than that. Uh, so that is should be a little bit insightful for you. Uh, yes, when you juice up maps harder, it does seem to add altars, in my opinion, beyond just pack size uh, in some ways. But uh, anyway, the numbers are what they are. Divine Orb Altars, I did get one in this entire full test of 200 maps. There's Exalted Orb Altars, I didn't get any of those. I think Blessed Orbs, Regal Orbs, Veil Chaos, Grand Eldritch Ikers. Now, why have I selected all of these? Well, it's because all of these, all six of these options, are quite rare raw drops in maps. Especially maps like this that don't have a ton of, uh, ton of league mechanics and pack size, or, or rather uh, quantity multipliers on them. So, whenever I got an altar that was designated for dropping one of these, I decided to log how many dropped because it could give me essentially a replicated uh, image of how many divine orbs I would get on average. So, I can just count it for any one of these, really. Yes, there's probably some rare cases where, you know, for example, I get a regal orb altar and a, a raw regal orb dropped and I'll never know it, right? Uh, but in most cases, uh, I think it's going to hold pretty true. So you can see here on map number three, I got a Grand Eldritch Iker Altar, and it dropped me a total of 18 in that map. So I averaged the grand total of them. You see the numbers are playing out here. We'll kind of scroll down here slowly. You see uh, on a Blessed Orb map on uh, 31, I got Blessed Orb Altar. Evidently towards the end of the map, I only got four. You can see here there's... Uh, Oh, that is a Divine Orb Altar that hit on map number 48. Only got six. It came towards the end of the map. Here's another one. I think Blessed Orbs again. Grand Eldritch Ikers over here. Uh, Blessed Orbs again. 22. That one was pretty big. A Blessed Orb. By the way, Blessed Orb is eight times more common than Divine Orbs. Regal Orb Altar, six times more common. Uh, Exalt and Divine Orb are identical. And Grand Eldritch Iker is also pretty rare, but I can't remember the exact weighting on it okay so you see there's 11 6 13 6 8 getting some sample sizes right we're getting some we're getting to see how many of whatever individual currency is dropping when the designated altar comes sometimes you get a big roll on it or not this is all eater of world side by the way all eater of world again this is kind of to get to the bottom of the divine orb altar information all right so uh again you can kind of take screenshots or Whatever you want to see how this all works out. In the end, there was a grand total of 729 altars spawned in 200 maps. You'll see that that's not 120. I need 120 that to get the average. So, one huge piece of information I got here, doing a little bit of math. In order to get 1,200 altars, I needed to do 330 maps. That's a higher number than I expected. I think a lot of people are running around with this, this idea that it's only going to take 200 now, maybe my testing wasn't as good as I thought it was, but again, I did a whole lot of testing, and I was surprised that my average uh, average number of altars per map is only 3.65. Yeah, I mean, some maps spawn zero. 
And it's not supposed to be that, you know, Mausoleum has fewer packs or whatever. They're, apparently, they're all supposed to be normalized now. Uh, but it would seem that we're not talking in the realm of five or six. We're talking in the realm of three to four. And that changes the math a little bit. It looks like the average number of currencies that dropped for Divines was six for, I think this was, uh, that, okay, that was Exalt. And this is Veiled Chaos Orb. Uh, this is uh, Regals, I think, 11, Blessed's 10, Grand Eldritch, Iker's 10. So the average number is just over 10. And I think this is going to be pretty consistent. If, if you were to do this test, replicate this test, I think you're going to see it's probably around 10 when you have uh, this much pack size, probably around 10, which is good. And this is the big reason why I don't want to see boss altars. This is why I chose Mausoleum that does not spawn boss altars, just like Jungle Valley last league did not spawn boss altars. Let's say, you know, I, I want to give myself the opportunity to spawn boss altars or minion altars. How many divine orbs can the boss drop? I think the maximum, absolute maximum, if the stars align, is eight. Well, that's still a lot less than the divine orb. Minion altar option, on average. Uh, the highest number I've heard anybody say from one of my community members is 39. They got 39 raw divine orbs. You're sure as hell never going to see that. <laughs> Chasing boss altars. So this is why I think it's important to still rush the boss. This is especially true uh, if, you're, if you're doing Eater of World side and uh, you're getting any kind of value out of the quantity, rarity, or duplication altars. There is also basic currency duplicated, which definitely uh, would be... You'd be losing the opportunity to see that altar if you also have boss altars in play. All right. So uh, average number of altars per map to figure out how many... Uh, maps I need to run that is sort of the second big piece of information I was looking for and then the third big piece of information I was looking for is this number here the average number of currencies because this was going to help me figure out really if it was prudent to to boss rush or run a map that doesn't have the boss because that's important information you know if that's kind of a good way to go and this kind of holds true also for um searing or for uh yeah, Searing Exarch as well. Because whether you're talking about Chaos Orbs, un Orbs of Unmaking, Awaken Orbs, you know, the Searing Exarch, higher level currencies, would you rather have 10 or like 3 or 4 off the boss? You'd probably rather have 10 on average that you're going to see on a strategy. Again, with a strategy like this. So that's basically it, guys. That is the data that I have here. And again, this spreadsheet was designed specifically to get down to the bottom of uh, Divine Orb hunting. Is it worth it? I'm not going to sit here and say it is worth it or not, but I will tell you this. When I do all the math, when it's all said and done at a price point of 235 chaos to one divine, which is where it's at currently. Yeah, it's been fluctuating like crazy. I don't know where it's going to be next week. Uh, but at that price point, I'm effectively earning a little over seven chaos per map. That's how much value I'm getting out of divine orb altar. So not all that crazy impressive. It's not bad. Seven chaos per map. That I'm getting on average from that altar that's so rare it only spawns once every 333, 330 maps. But anyway, I leave it to you to figure out whether you think that's worth it for you or not. Okay, so let's uh, let, let's explore that a little bit more as far as Searing Exarch versus uh, Eater of Worlds kind of final thoughts of this video. Don't want to talk about some extra golden nuggets. This is the part you came here for, maybe. <laughs> uh, so... One thing that I really don't hear people talk about much, that really needs to be said, super important, is in the context of magic finding. It's obvious, super, super obvious, which one you should choose if you're doing any kind of magic finding related content whatsoever. That could be, that could be anything ranging from quantity on gear, rarity on gear, reliquary scare abuse or not. Enraged strongbox sextant use, divination card farming or not, any sort of th farming uniques, farming conversion loot, if, if you're still into that, which obviously got nerfed a bit but still exists. If you're doing any of that, Eater of Worlds, you should be running Eater of Worlds. There's, there's absolutely no question about it. The main reason you should be running Eater of Worlds, two reasons. One, the quantity and rarity altar has had its waiting massively buffed you are going to get more quantity and rarity absolute in an absolute sense 
like the total grand total number. You're going to get more of that from the Eater of World because the Eater of World upside buffs whatever spawns. Only one upside spawns and it buffs it by 50% sometimes. Or 100%. 50% of the time. I can't remember exactly. Whereas the Searing Exarch gives you two upsides. Neither of them are especially buffed. The quantity rarity uh, multiplier, player base multiplier is so common. It, it shows up so often that you, you're better off uh, seeing it only one time and giving it the opportunity to be enhanced from that. That's one major reason. The other major reason is you don't want to have to choose between, say, Eldritch Minions drop Chaos Orbs or you get uh, Divination Card duplication uh, while you're Divination Card farming, right? You don't want to have to make that choice. That's not a fun choice. You want to take both of those. Uh, but you definitely would rather choose, or, or, or let's say it was Quantity and Rarity Alter. Let's just say it was Quantity, Rarity, or Chaos Orbs. You still don't want to have to make that choice because both of those are good. Both of those are very useful for the farm you're doing if you're Magic Finding. However, let's take one of the one of the best Eater of World Altar options for minions. Orbs, uh, Scouring Orbs. Scouring Orbs is one of the best, one of the most lucrative options. And still not very good. You don't mind that choice, do you? You like that choice. Quantity, Rarity versus Scouring Orbs. Okay, that's easy. Quantity and Rarity every time if you're magic finding. No question. Uh, also, here's another pretty easy choice. Uh... Exalted Orbs versus Quantity and Rarity. Oh, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take Exalted Orbs. <laughs> They're worth like 20 Chaos apiece. Yeah, I, I think that's probably worth more than Quantity Rarity Altar. Duh, Altar. Duh. Of course you're going to choose that. Uh, Divine Orbs. Hello. <laughs> the choice could never be easier than that, right? So your choice is always easy uh, when you're doing the Eater of World side and Magic Finding at the same time. So that is... Honestly, that's probably the biggest piece of information I can give on this entire video. Uh, that, that it's just a complete no-brainer. There's no question. You don't want to be choosing between Orbs of Unmaking versus Quantity and Rarity. Or, you know, um, Awakened Sextant versus Quantity and Rarity. Or again, you know, Val Orbs versus... Du divination duplicate i don't know you don't want to be making those choices you want to choose in between like orbs fusing orbs <laughs> fusing orbs or scouring orbs versus them. these things are worth not even a like like just a fraction of a chaos orb all right so that is uh one major takeaway the next thing is i kind of already mentioned this but uh this strategy you don't necessarily have to choose the strategy you just saw me do but it is ac absolutely amazing for Anyone who is trying to just blast through maps and, and farm sanctums or farm sanctums as well. Uh, so if you're someone who's looking for a way uh, to do sanctums and and not completely waste your... Not like just go out and buy maps, like pay for maps and not even make currency in those maps. That's terrible. At least spend an extra minute in the map or two minutes and uh, make five divines an hour on the side. Almost completely self-sustaining the strategy. That sounds a lot better uh, in my opinion. So... Uh, whether you're going to use the Searing Exarch or Eater of World, that's up to you. That's your choice. I think that the Searing Exarch is much better for someone who's just starting out the league. Someone who's still not got, somebody who's still not rolling with any kind of bank. Someone who is using every single little bit of currency they obtain to upgrade their gear. Can't really even invest in anything. Uh, thankfully, this is basically self-sustainable strategy. Uh, but you're also going to want to be finding your own Awakened Sextants, your own Chaos Orbs, your own Orbs of Unmaking, your own Orbs of Regret, your own Val Orbs, your own Cartographer Chisels. Okay, these are all currencies that are extremely valuable in a solo self-found setting, which, you know, obviously uh, kind of goes without saying. This is very uh, Searing Exarch kind of advantageous for solo self-found in this sense, uh, that you can supply your own major map materials without having to go online and, you know, pay what tiny little bit of currency you've accumulated uh, to try to, you know, squeeze your way into investing a little bit more uh, to try to get a little bit more back. However, at a certain point, if you're like me, you're going to start floating a lot of currency. You're going to start getting to a point where your loot filter is getting much stricter. It's beginning to get so strict. You're not looking at cartographer chisels. You don't want to see those on on your uh, loot filter, or orbs of fusing for that matter, or orbs of scouring. You don't want to see even uh, orbs of regret. You don't even want to see chaos orbs on your loot filter at a certain point. Uh, and when that point comes, well, then it's a no-brainer. Of course, you should just go with Eater of Worlds, because you don't care about any of the Eldritch Minion options, except for 
things that are worth multiple chaos orbs per click, which would be exalted orbs, uh, veiled chaos orbs, or divine orbs, of course. There's also divination rewards on there that I didn't really talk about. Uh, people have talked a lot about the Searing Exarch rewards. I myself got a Fiend card off of one of the divination card Searing Exarch rewards. It, and uh, I've heard them described as the more jackpot-oriented divination card side. Maybe it's true on the weightings. I haven't really looked too deep into those weightings, but I will say I, I'm familiar with at least somebody, one person in my community who got the most common divination card reward for Eater of World Side, which, which is divination minions drop divination cards that reward basic currency, and they got an unrequited love <laughs> from it. That's what he said. He said unrequited love. Uh, he showed the screenshot. He said this came from a basic currency divination card altar. That's a huge find. That is absolutely qualifies for a jackpot uh so that happens which i assume means also house of mirrors can drop from there but again the waiting is enormous uh for like reign of chaos and other things so the jackpot's harder to hit so maybe searing exarch's a little bit better a little bit smarter jackpot perhaps eater of worlds still has a ton of huge options too i just did 100 maps on, on eater of worlds i got uh, desecrated virtue i got uh, enlightened card there's a whole bunch of different things Th i assume the cheater can drop on that side because a lot of divination card drops quality gems or level gems things like that so there are some definitely some major jackpot hits uh but yeah i, I don't have a whole lot to say about the uh, divination card uh there all right so that's it <laughs> I think that's it for the video. Uh, wow, I actually basically did that one take. I'm surprised I got through that. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this. Uh, is there anything you think that maybe I should have done differently? Uh, that, it, to be fair, at least wouldn't have required an umpteen more hours of testing. <laughs> because I don't want to keep doing this. I want to get back to doing some more lucrative farming. Which uh, will require some more videos, I guess. Uh, in the near future. But first, I'm going to be coming out talking about my Caustic Arrow character that is surprised me in every way. We're talking about a build that I didn't even plan to make. You know the build's good whenever yours truly didn't even want to play the build and is playing it because it's too damn good. <laughs> so look forward to that. Uh, that's coming really soon. Uh, in the meantime, I will catch you guys around later hopefully you're all having a great uh, holiday season hope you got some time off like me hopefully you're able to watch some videos and play the game a little bit yourself i'll see you guys in game all right in the meantime take care have a good night have a good week see you in the next video